we're not trying to make anyone what they aren't. You, you can't become Jewish. The, the, the purpose of this, and that's what I find with Christians. A lot of Christians say, oh, we don't want to become Jewish. Or why are you trying to make it? I'm yeah. like, how would that even work? I, I don't want anybody to become Jewish. I want people, I want Christians and Jews to have better relationships than they do. Right. Because they don't, they're not so busy attacking and fighting each other because there's no reason to fight. Right. The two belong together, teaching and helping and serving one another. I've, I've had that conviction longer than Wonderful. I've known you, Rabbi. I've been like, Wonderful. it's time to, to we talk about tearing down a wall. It's time to tear down yes. this wall. Who else have we got? You know, the secular world is on the march against Judeo-Christian values, and so Absolutely. is the Islamic world, and that Absolutely. leaves very few people. So yeah. I, I, I quote back to Benjamin Franklin, right? We must hang together, for, or we shall surely all hang separately. Christianity is an institution. Judaism is an institution. I'm happy to acknowledge both of them are. I'm even happy to acknowledge that both of them have clear missions in mind. The point comes down to what is the obligation of either one of those two, and then to remember that they don't exist for their own sake. Yeah. They exist to point to something outside of themselves. And why I think I need to be pointing that out more is because too many Christians are finding the easy way out. Oh, Darren, you, you're just predisposed to love Judaism. I'm like, no, you're missing it. I'm predisposed to want the real version of Jesus. And... That's not belonging to Christianity, certainly not. It's not even, I'm not even claiming it's be belonging to Judaism because Judaism is an institution. What it's yes. belonging to is Torah. Institutions have purpose. I'm not denying the value of that and that labels don't have, they have purpose. But like you said earlier, we need to challenge people. Do you know the history of the label you're taking? Are you, are you fully, aware, fully aware of the backstory? Any Jew alive today that will ever be alive that goes anywhere near the notion that Jews should not be evangelizing and, and proselytizing doesn't know who they are. They're a terrible Jew. Because if you don't go back to Leviticus 23 and realize what our calling is to the nations, and yes, to the nations that don't like us even, then you don't know what it means to be Jewish, and you probably shouldn't say out loud that you're Jewish. Christians don't know their own history. And when I say their history, I'm not talking about biblical history because Christianity's history is not Bible history. I mean, I don't think Christians often realize this. They get to spend every Sunday paging through the intimate diary of someone else, hmm. and they're comfortable with it. Oh, you see the Jews did this there. You see the Jews did that there. I'm like, yeah, you, you are reading our diary every Sunday. <laughs> How comfortable are you to do the same with your diary? Yeah. With your Christian history and what your Christian history. And that's what I find puzzling when I say to the Christians, do you know where your institution started? Like by the fourth century, it became formalized. They don't know it. And they, they no. don't think it matters. And I'm like, it's that's not taught. rich. Yeah, yeah th that's rich. You spend all your time. I mean, I've had to listen to you and I've heard a lot of people point out what's wrong with Israel. And I can't get worked up because it is wrong. My heavens, if, if your brain's working, you open the Bible and one of our greatest kings commits adultery and murders someone, King David. Well, I don't know how you smooth that over. Yeah. I don't think there's a lawyer in the world good enough to make that look good. Can't make like it's not there. So I just ask Christians, hey, how about you turn that lens on yourself for a bit? What might you find? There's a, there's a black man here in the United States, a musician, and uh, he goes and does speeches and gives talks. And he decided <clears throat> that he was going to go and make friends with members of the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Right, which you know, you know what they yeah. how they feel about the average black person, and he started going to Klan rallies, and he befriended a a high ranking member of the Ku Klux Klan. He actually befriended him, befriended him to such an extent that this man renounced his membership and handed gave this black man his robe and his hood, and said, "Here you are," and he walked wow. away from it. And I comment, I saw this on Facebook, and I, I wow. commented, which I don't do very often, but every now and then something like that is really compelling. And I said, <clears throat> it's amazing what you can accomplish 
when you don't care about being heard and you're willing to listen to people who have turned to hatred because they're so desperate to be heard. Mm. And I think coming from the Gentile side, I'm not accusing Jews of turning to hatred, but what has benefited me the most in the last five years has been, okay, I, I'm coming to it with a pre-existing set of beliefs and all that, but I don't have to win on that. Right. To learn from this person, to get more perspective, to get more insight. And in fact, as the more I've learned, the more I've seen, there's some things that, yeah, I had to walk away from making assumptions there. But for the most part, what I always believed is still there. What right. I believed 18 years as a Christian is still there. It's, I, I, I did not have to renounce 85% of what I believed. Right. In fact, that 85% has grown and it has so much more richness and context and depth and understanding now. And it's feeding into the 15% that I have learned that, that I have had to ch Okay. Yeah. I can't, that's gotta go. I can't think that way anymore, Right. but yeah. I, I haven't had to walk away from it and I haven't had to suddenly become a legalist and, you know, follow the rules and all this sort of stuff. I don't have to do that. And, uh, I, that's what I hope this book is going to achieve.